Welcome back to uh, Make Your Daughter a Dress. Today is lesson three and we're going to talk about how to um, alter the July flowers pattern to better fit your daughter if you need to do that and um, then we're going to lay out our pattern and cut out our fabric. So let's get started. Okay, here I am with my pattern um, all cut out and I am gonna use this um, adorable um, bunny fabric to make my dress. And I'm making um, a size three July flowers. So um, as I mentioned in the previous video, if you feel you need to lengthen the skirt, um, as you can see here, this is the size three um, line of the skirt, but I've cut my pattern out with the four, five, and six as well. Um, if I felt that um, my daughter was taller and needed the length of the four or the five, I could simply cut the skirt out at that line at the bottom hem so that I'm still using the size three for the waist, but I would just cut it longer for um, the other sizes. Likewise, if um, I were gonna make um, a size um, six based on her um, chest or um, waist measurement, but I felt oh, lengthwise she really only needs the five, I could cut the six bodice pieces, but then I could and cut the six um, at the waist, but then just um, the skirt hem, cut it off at the um, five line. If you feel that your child needs that additional length in the bodice, um, because that perhaps they're long-waisted, um, you can add the length at the waist Again, by following um, the width of the smaller size, but then following the cutoff line of um, the uh, next size up. Um, that's something you often have to do. Um, I, I regularly add an inch length when I'm sewing clothes for myself. I, you don't see it as much in children, especially at um, the smaller sizes, but it certainly could be the case that maybe you have a child that just happens to be long-waisted and, and needs that um, additional um, length here in um, the bodice. One way to tell that um, would be to actually take the bodice piece and, and just hold it up to your child to, to double check that if you needed to. Um, July Flowers is not a fitted waist. Um, you know, it is a dress that sort of hangs loosely. So um, there really is a little bit of give there. It's not like you're trying to get it exactly on the waistline. So probably just giving yourself that extra length or um, shortening in the skirt is gonna take care of um, that extra height or petiteness that um, your child might have. Now you have two other decisions to make before we start cutting. Um, July Flowers comes with two bodice variations. There's a boat neck and there's a scoop neck. And this little red dress is the boat neck variation. There is no difference in construction, as you can see that, and um, therefore it makes no difference which one you choose. It's just your personal preference, whichever you and your daughter would like best. The second decision you need to make is whether or not you want to try and um, interface the entire bodice. And the way I want you to make that decision is to take a piece of your fabric, just take a little square, and fuse um, a piece of the interfacing onto the back of it. You probably can't see that I've done that, but it is there. And then just feel how it feels to you. 
Um, if you feel that is going to be uncomfortable for your child or you feel that it just makes it too stiff, then don't do it. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that because I, I think it feels very nice and that um, it will be great for the mom um, who receives the stress to just help with that wrinkling. All right, I have my pattern pieces all cut out. And one of the pattern pieces is this um, number nine button placement guide. Now that you're going to be using later um, to um, determine where the buttons go, but it's actually not um, anything that you need to cut out of your fabric. So we're just gonna set this piece aside for later. Okay. Now in your pattern, you'll see that there's a cutting diagram and it shows you how to lay out all your pieces. And um, I'm gonna show you that in just a second. But first, let's look at your pattern pieces. Cause like I said, I'm gonna assume you know nothing. So you'll notice that on each of the pieces, it tells you what it'll either say, place on the fold, or it'll have a green line arrow, okay? Now your fabric's gonna come with two cut edges, right? And two finished edges, okay? We call this the salvage edge. And the first thing you wanna do is make sure we get a nice straight edge on the cut edge of the fabric. Now, mine is nice and straight because um, uh, this is one of my fabrics and I tore it, but I'm going to show you um, how you can get that cut edge, a nice straight edge, especially if um, the fabric store you purchased it from kind of just cut it whichever which way. <laughs> so you're going to take um, your fabric shears, you're going to go right here along the cut edge and just make a snip. Okay. You can actually do this from um, your salvage edge. This is my little square that I cut out to test um, the interfacing. But um, cut from, just make a little snip, and then you're gonna tear it. And all the fabrics that we talked about will tear lovely just like that um, because they are 100% cotton and you now have a perfectly on grain straight edge right along here. Okay, I've now folded my fabric in half with the two salvage edges together and I've made sure that I've lined up this top edge that I know is completely straight. And I've put a couple pins in the salvage edges to um, make sure they don't shift or move. And now I'm gonna start laying out my fabric pieces, or my pattern pieces, like the um, cutting diagram shows me. You wanna lay all your pattern pieces out on your fabric, following the diagram, and make sure they're going to fit. So for the pieces that are supposed to go on that fold, you put it right on that folded edge and pin it there first, and then pin around to the other um, corners to hold the piece in place. For the pieces that have that green line arrow, the top of the arrow and the bottom of the arrow both need to be the same distance from the salvage edge. So you lay your piece on the fabric and you measure, mine, you use your tape um, measure or ruler. So that top of the arrow is five and a half inches from my salvage edge and my bottom arrow is five and a half inches. And you shift the piece to get it to match that, then pin it, and then you can put other pins to hold the piece in place. Okay, now piece eight is um, the optional piping piece. It's um, to make um, the fabric that's gonna go around your piping, and I just wanna show you how you're gonna lay that out. Um, the pattern instructs you to buy an extra quarter 
of a yard of fabric if you want to make the um, piping out of the same fabric as the dress. And I'm gonna make my piping out of a contrasting um, fabric, so um, I'm not actually gonna cut it out of this bunny fabric, but I just wanna show you how you would do that, whatever fabric choice you're using. So again, you need that grain line to um, be the same distance the top arrow and the bottom arrow from the salvage. And what that, that is doing is putting this um, piping piece on um, the true 45 degree um, diagonal. So you can um, lay that out and again measure. So that's nine inches and that's nine inches and I've got it correct. You also need to cut out your bodice lining pieces. So again, make sure to put that um, bodice front right on the fold like it shows you. And for the bodice back, again, make sure that both of the arrowheads are equidistant from the salvage edges. Now, if you're going to line your whole bodice, um, you need to cut um, the bodice pieces out of your interfacing as well. And interfacing works just like your fashion fabric. It has a grain just like um, the fabric, and you need to, and it has a salvage etch as well. So um, I've folded it and I've lined everything up, my edge here, and um, my salvage edge, and I'm placing um, the bodice front piece right on the fold, just like I did with my fabric, and now I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. Okay, let's take an inventory. I think I have all my pieces um, cut out, but um, let's make sure. So first up, I have um, two skirt pieces. I have one um, bodice front cut out of my um, fashion fabric, one cut out of my lining, and one cut out of my interfacing. I have two bodice backs cut out of my um, fashion fabric, two cut out of my lining, and two cut out of my interfacing. Now, if you're not going to um, interface the whole bodice, then you're going to need two strips of um, interfacing cut one inch wide and the length of um, this edge of the bodice back, and, and the pattern explains that to you. I also have four um, pockets cut out. Um, you certainly could cut those out of the lining fabric as well um, if you didn't want to cut them out of your fashion fabric. And then, um, well, I only need one pocket, but I actually have two just because it was easier to cut it out that way. So if you have any questions about cutting out your pieces, um, just put them in the comments or in the Facebook group and I will do my best to um, answer them, but hopefully um, you have the information you need to get all your pieces cut out and you'll be ready to start sewing in the next lesson. Happy sewing!